In the future, the rich use some unfortunate people as live vessels to grow donor organs. A guy named Lincoln Six Echo wakes up after having nightmares in a high-tech room. An artificial intelligence informs him of the need to undergo an eight-hour medical exam at the Mental Conditioning Center. After scanning his watch, Six gets his standard clothes, white overalls and sneakers. As he leaves his room, he finds himself among people who are dressed exactly like him. They are all survivors of a global catastrophe who live in an isolated compound in the middle of an endless ocean. This place regularly holds a lottery, the winners of which get a chance to go to Paradise Island, the last unpolluted oasis on Earth. And breathe fresh air, swim in the ocean, I can't believe I won. All of the residents of the complex dream of getting there, but some of them have to wait many years for their luck. The residents here are closely monitored, assessing their behavior and health, and are required to follow a certain diet and exercise daily to stay in shape. All of the residents dutifully obey these rules, but Lincoln is the only one who is not thrilled with them. The guy has a friend named Jordan 2 Delta, a charming girl who brightens up his stay in the gated complex. After breakfast, Lincoln comes in for a medical exam with Dr. Merrick, who is concerned about the guy's condition. He listens to Lincoln as he tells him about his strange dreams, where he finds himself in the water after falling off a boat. After living in the compound for more than three years, Lincoln begins to wonder about what's going on here. He is especially concerned that all of the residents are doing the same thing day in and day out, living in the hope of getting to the island. I want to know answers and I, and, I, and I wish that there was more. Merrick assures the patient that the island represents a real opportunity to which he must aspire. The doctor himself and the other staff members of the complex are permanently assigned to this building and cannot leave it, as it is their job to keep it running. Merrick sends Lincoln for tests, during which he injects nanobots into his eyeball. They would monitor the guy's condition and leave his body naturally after 24 hours. After the physical exam, Lincoln goes to the lab, where the residents of the compound work hard every day to provide useful substances to the mysterious red tubes. None of them, except the guy, questions the purpose and meaning of their presence here. Instead, Lincoln's partners seek to unravel the scheme by which the lottery winners are determined. Suddenly, a girl named Rima begins having contractions. This means that she and her newborn baby girl are guaranteed to go to the island, so everyone present is happy for her. At this point, Lincoln's computer malfunctions and he goes down to the tech room to get a specialist. In fact, the guy breaks the computer chip on purpose to meet the good-natured technician McCord. He differs from the unemotional employees of the complex and often shares the occasional drink with Lincoln. The curious young man asks the technician questions about his life in another part of the complex, to which McCourt reluctantly answers out of fear of saying too much. He asks Lincoln to keep their communication a secret and withdraws when summoned by his superiors. Unexpectedly, the guy notices an insect in the room and decides to take it with him, placing it in a matchbox. Meanwhile, McCourt arrives at a secret operating room, where it is revealed what is really going on in the compound. It turns out that people here are artificially grown, extracted from a special pod when they are already mature. Looks like we have a fine product. Tag them and ship them to Foundation. Each newborn is given a unique serial number, and an electronic watch is worn to keep track of his or her vitals. At the same time, in the laboratory, the residents of the complex, without even knowing it, are enriching these capsules with human embryos with healthy nutrients. In the evening, a party is held before the lottery results are announced. Lincoln shares with Jordan his amazing discovery. He found an insect inside the isolated building. The girl is amazed, since all living creatures were thought to be extinct after the global disaster, and nothing could get inside the building without triggering its sensors. The guy is convinced that something is wrong with the complex, but his friend insists that he stop trying to find a trick in all things. It's time for the announcement of the winners, and Jordan is delighted to learn that she's the next lucky girl. Your time has come. You're moving out to the island. Lincoln cannot be truly happy for his friend, for he does not want to part with her. He wakes up again at night from nightmares and decides to sneak into the maintenance area. There he lets the insect loose and follows it, finding himself in an unfamiliar sector. To blend in with the staff, he puts on a medical gown and sneaks into the operating room where Rima is in labor. The newborn baby is instantly taken from its mother, and the girl herself is ruthlessly deprived of her life. The baby is handed over to a married couple, of which the wife is a complete copy of Rima. Meanwhile, in the next room, an organ harvesting operation is performed on a recent lottery winner. The big guy wakes up during the operation in a panic trying to escape his tormentors, but is brought back with harpoons. All this horror unfolds in front of the shocked Lincoln, who tries to escape from the staff. I wanna live! I wanna die! The furious Dr. Merrick looks through the surveillance tapes where he spots Lincoln and declares him a fugitive. The guy doesn't have much time to think, but he still manages to get to Jordan and warn her that the island is a fake. Grabbing the bewildered girl by the arm, he tries to run away with her from the compound. All of the residents are informed that Lincoln is infected with the virus, and they move aside in fear at the sight of him. 
This allows the guards to chase the couple through the building without hindrance. However, the two manage to enter the maintenance area while fighting off the guards. Jordan and Lincoln escape through the sewers into the room where the artificially created humans are located. They are all initially programmed to believe that they are the only human survivors in the world, and their greatest dream is to get to the island. The couple continue their escape and eventually find an exit to the complex. They pass through a long tunnel and climb to the top, where they finally see sunlight for the first time in their lives. Once on the surface, they realize that they have been underground all this time in a converted military bunker. Crossing the fence, they are genuinely surprised to find the ordinary world stretching out around them. Meanwhile, inside the compound, Merrick is giving a presentation to wealthy guests during which he introduces the Agnate, an organic matrix capable of cloning people and adjusting to their age. Providing a carrier for your baby, a second pair of lungs, fresh skin. He informs the wealthy sponsors that the clones are merely soulless masses of flesh, devoid of feelings and emotions, created solely to provide organs for transplantation and prolong the life of the customers. In fact, however, numerous tests have shown that in order to maintain the viability of organs and other donor tissues, they must be grown in an optimal environment. This is why clones undergo extensive physical training and are put on a special diet. A squad of experienced fighters under the command of Albert Laurent is assembled to capture the fugitives. Merrick warns that their discovery could cause a huge scandal among the public, since even the US Department of Defense uses the services of the cloning corporation. After a careful examination of the fugitives' identities, Albert learns that Lincoln is the only one who has had doubts about his purpose. Also, despite the fact that the clones are devoid of awareness of their gender identity, the guy begins to show sympathy for his friend Jordan. Nevertheless, Merrick claims that the clones know nothing of the outside world and their level of development has stopped at adolescence. Lincoln and Jordan spend the night in an abandoned building, unsure of what to do next. In the morning, they notice a motorcyclist passing by, and realize that they need to continue their journey along the road. Inspired by what he sees, Lincoln discovers the matchbox from McCord with the address in his pocket and suggests to Jordan that they go find it. So the pair arrive at a bar, where they meet McCord. The technician hastily takes the fugitives to his home and tells them the shocking truth of their existence. You're clones. You're copies of people out here in the world. He also tells us that they are specially raised as donors within the walls of the compound. Jordan can't believe these words and claims that he clearly remembers her childhood memories. However, it turns out that similar memories are present in all the clones. Moreover, Merrick won't allow the sponsors to meet their clones. If these people find out the truth, the doctor's empire will collapse in an instant. However, Lincoln and Jordan are confident that their sponsors will show mercy and ask McCord to help find them. Meanwhile, Albert's squad commences pursuit of the fugitives. He tells his assistant to track Lincoln with the nanobots that have been implanted in his body. McCord finds the addresses of the couple's sponsors and buys the friend's train tickets so they can get there on their own. Finally, he warns the clones not to trust the real people, as they are capable of anything to survive. Albert's associates also arrive at the train station. McCord spots them and manages to warn his friends before he gets shot in the chest. The frightened Lincoln and Jordan go on the run again and manage to hop onto a train carriage. They arrive in a modern metropolis, where the girl sees her exact replica, the supermodel Sarah Jordan, on posters. She tries to contact her sponsor, but the phone is answered by her son, who mistakes Jordan for his mother. The call is immediately traced by Albert and he sends an interception team to the fugitives. However, Jordan and Lincoln are detained by the police, suspecting them of destroying McCourt. Since the clones must not fall into the hands of the authorities, Albert's agents decide to attack the police convoy. Taking advantage of the resulting turmoil, the pair flee. During a lengthy pursuit with gunfire, Lincoln steals a motorcycle and, failing to control it, crashes it into one of the skyscrapers. Everything leads to the couple falling off the building, but miraculously surviving. Meanwhile, back at the complex, a friend of Lincoln starts asking questions about what's going on, too, in a conversation with Merrick. I'm not sure that the contamination is real. The naive guy tells the doctor about the insect Lincoln caught and says he intends to find out the whole truth. The doctor gets rid of the patient with an injection and tells his assistants to make a list of all the defective products in the series. After a desperate escape from their pursuers, the clones finally arrive at the home of one of the sponsors, the designer Tom Lincoln. After a retinal scan, the pair make their way inside the mansion. There, Lincoln is attacked by Tom, but stops when he is surprised to find his exact replica in front of him. Meanwhile, Merrick receives the results of a scan of Lincoln's brain and discovers another negative side to the cloning. 
It turns out that one of the clone lines to which Lincoln belongs retains residual memories of their sponsor's mind. Tom behaves in a friendly manner with the clones and helps them remove their tracking bracelets. Lincoln is surprised to notice a model of the Renovatio boat, which he has seen repeatedly in his dreams. He tells the designer about the corporation's massive deception and says they must reveal the truth to the other sponsors. Tom, in turn, talks about his severe illness, which is the reason he needs a donor. He questions the need to reveal the truth about the corporation, given that even the President of the United States has his own clone. Jordan intervenes in their conversation. This might not mean anything to you. There are thousands of us, and everyone we've ever known is going to die in that place. Tom agrees to help and leaves to get dressed, but he actually contacts the corporation and informs them of Lincoln's presence nearby. Jordan decides to stay home and, sensing that Tom may be lying, asks his friend not to trust him. Tom lets Lincoln drive his car and they drive to the new studio together. Suddenly, the designer points a gun at the clone, confirming his evil intentions. They are surrounded on all sides by Albert's men, and Lincoln tries to get away from their pursuers in the car. They end up in an accident and find themselves inside an abandoned warehouse. Albert pulls a gun on them, but doesn't know exactly who to shoot. The targets look exactly the same and each proves to be the original. Lincoln discreetly puts his bracelet on the designer's hand. Albert, mistaking him for a clone, takes the shot. Shit. Lincoln now assumes the identity of his sponsor and returns to the mansion to Jordan, where they spend the night making love together. The corporation discovers that four generations of products have turned out to be defective and could pose a threat in the future because of their tendency to disobey. The doctor orders the destruction of all unformed clones in order to prevent a possible rebellion. He also devises a way to discreetly destroy the batch of defective clones, increasing the number of winners in the lottery. The next morning, the fake Lincoln is contacted by a representative of the corporation and informed that he needs to undergo a scan to grow a new clone. He also informs him that all other defective products will be destroyed. Lincoln can't let that happen, so he and Jordan work out a plan to save their friends. The girl deliberately spends money from McCord's credit card, thanks to which she is found and taken to the compound. Meanwhile, Lincoln, disguised as Tom, also arrives at the corporation, where he is to be rescanned. At the operating table, Jordan is about to receive a lethal injection but she manages to get rid of the guards using a hidden gun. Meanwhile, Albert reports to Merrick on the completion of the mission. The doctor expresses his intention to destroy Jordan's clone, even though it will not save his sponsor's life. Albert disapproves of Merrick taking on the role of God and his attitude changes. After examining Tom's body, the doctors discover a bracelet on his other wrist and realize that the clone is still alive. Lincoln makes his way into a hall with holograms that broadcast fake landscapes of the contaminated area around the complex. He sets out to blow up the grid system and show the residents of the complex the truth. The lottery-winning clones are driven into an enclosed room where they are about to be burned alive. In an unexpected move for Jordan, Albert helps her confront the guards and set the people free. Merrick catches up with Lincoln and a fierce fight ensues between the two men. The doctor manages to prevail and begins to strangle his opponent. At the last moment, however, Lincoln grabs his electric gun and fires it into his enemy's throat. Taking advantage of his confusion, the guy wraps an electrical cable around the doctor's neck. There is an explosion in the room and the men are thrown to the precipice by the shockwave. Lincoln manages to grab hold of another wire, and it ends up as a gallows for Merrick. The hologram disappears and the clones make their way out of the bunker, looking around in wonder. At the end of the story, the happy Jordan and Lincoln head out on the Renovatio boat toward their new lives. Do you think Dr. Merrick's actions were justified? Write about it in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.